This episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Be sure and check them out and be sure and use the promo code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. A little over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot and most of it the hard way. And I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. everyone and welcome to the podcast. I'm Gordon Brewer and this is episode number 298 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. So glad you've joined me and if you're listening in for the first time, do take time to follow us or subscribe to the podcast wherever you might be listening to it and also leave us a review and uh, my hope is is that people always find um the content and what we put here and produce here on the Practice of Therapy podcast to be helpful and useful and running a private practice or getting started and that sort of thing. So my guest today is Ryan DeRusso, and Ryan is a financial planner. He's not a therapist, but he works with a lot of therapists. And he and I talk about um, this whole topic of financial planning. You know, one of the things that uh, a theme that I hear all the time from folks and uh, a big a big part of most of us that are in this private practice consulting space really pound in on is being able to know how to run the money side of your practice. And one of the things that I think a lot of people maybe don't have on their radar, especially early on, is is just planning for the future, just thinking uh, ahead to retirement or thinking ahead to maybe some of those times when uh, the client load kind of goes down and that sort of thing. And so we kind of delve into that. And also just looking at what is a good way to uh, think about your financial planning. So looking forward to you hearing my conversation with Ryan. I think it's a valuable conversation and uh, something that we need to revisit all the time. You know, one of the things that I will say, and I don't say this in a bragging way, but one of the things I will say is, is that um, I I think my wife and I have done a good job of planning for our retirement. And um, as I've shared on previous episodes, my wife is disabled and uh, we're really kind of in those last stages for her. She's gone under hospice care and um, all that that involves. Um, don't want to delve into that too much in this episode. There's a previous episode you can hear for with my friend Ernesto Segismundo, um, where we talk about those kind of hard things. But one of the things I where I was going with this is one of the things that my wife and I did earlier on in life is we invested in a long term care policy, which has been able, which has enabled us and uh, to be able to keep her here at home and pay caregivers to come in and help take care of her. So that's something that I think is worth looking into. And I can tell you firsthand, it's been well worth the investment that we put into it early on, but don't wait too long to do something like that. But before we get to my conversation with Ryan, um, something that you need to do, jump on if you haven't done so already, particularly if you are in those beginning stages of starting your practice, is the Practice Launch Club. And the discount uh, for joining for this month is quickly coming to an end. Uh, the discount, if you use the discount code PLC Fall 2023, by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash launch club um, ends at the end of this month. And uh, we're just a few days away from that. So be sure and check it out. The Practice Launch Club, just to uh, 
re-familiarize you with it is a membership community specifically for those people that are in those beginning stages of starting a private practice. I set it up to help people find support um, as they're getting started because there are a lot of questions people have. There are a lot of things that you need to know and getting started and really kind of planning everything out. And so be sure and check that out. Practiceoftherapy.com slash launch club. We meet two times a month and there are also some lessons and tutorials that are available with that along with some resources such as paperwork packets and that sort of thing for those being a member. And also we have a, an online community uh, on the circle platform that is part of that as well. And so be sure and check it out. Practice of therapy.com slash launch club and use the promo code before the end of this month, just a few days away uh, by uh, using the promo code PLC fall 2023. So be sure and check it out. And also, before we get to my conversation with Ryan, love for you to hear from one of the members of the Sightcraft Network, along with our sponsor, Therapy Notes. Hi, I'm Whitney Owens. If you don't know me, I am the person behind the Wise Practice Podcast, which is part of the Sightcraft Network of Podcasts. I am so proud to be a part of this network, along with my good friend, Gordon Brewer, who's doing such amazing work on helping people on their practice journey. If you haven't discovered the Wise Practice Podcast yet, you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. I'd love for you to join us as we explore how to grow a faith-based practice that brings you the income you need and the lifestyle you want. Be sure to check out the podcast and other helpful information at WhitneyOwens.com. There you will learn more about the Wise Practice community, how to become a member, as well as information on the 2023 Wise Practice Summit. And hey, Sitecraft Network is a sponsor, so hope you can make it. One of the keys to a successful private practice is having the right systems and processes in place to make things run as smoothly as possible. With a system like Therapy Notes, you'll have more time to spend with what matters most, your clients. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, Create rich documentation and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Your clinical records will be secure with less paperwork, which means you can give a much better quality of care. It's the EHR that Gordon uses in his practice. Be sure to check them out today by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure to use the promo code Gordon to get two months free. Well, hello, folks, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm happy for you to get to know today, Ryan DeRusso. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I've been been looking forward to this conversation because I think it's something that a lot of folks don't really maybe think about, and that's just kind of thinking about their practice long term. Mm -hmm. And in particular, just I know as uh, when you contacted me, it was just thinking about your practice as an asset. So I, I'm looking forward to this conversation. But Ryan, as a start with everyone, why don't you tell folks a little more about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed? Sure. Yeah. So I actually I came this I went this route in many different ways. So I uh, started as a writer. I was a journalist. I've written for many publications. And one of my first jobs was actually at Money Magazine, where I was covering financial advisors. And so I learned a lot about like what was good and what was bad and what was actually good for consumers and what was bad for consumers in how the financial advising world worked. But as I was a writer, for the most part, I worked uh, for myself. I worked as a self-employed writer. And so I learned a ton of things through that process about like how to, you know, save or build cash flow, but also protect cash flow, how to save on taxes how to invest and those sort of things. And I always was in the like the financial, personal finance realm of writing. So I, I knew a lot of the X's and O's, but then also learned a lot of the 
you know, like less known stuff for the self-employed folks. And then, you know, after like COVID, like so many of us, we kind of reevaluated things. And I really wanted to start working with people one-on-one. And so that's when I decided to shift towards financial advising and really focusing on the self-employed. And one group that I found like really I connected with, they connected with me. I saw a need for it was in the therapy space. And since they're often, you know, private practice owners, obviously self-employed and whatnot, it became like a very natural group to connect with. And I, you know, enjoyed working with them. So yeah, uh, that's why, yeah. that's why I'm here. Well, it's a good, it's a good thing because I think as people have heard on this podcast several times before, and, and I think it's one reason that people listen to this particular podcast is we really don't learn any of the business side of, of running a practice in graduate school or any, any of that sort of thing. And so we have to learn a lot of it on our own. And, and I think reaching out to others and having folks like you to, to kind of help us navigate all of that is, is really important. Yeah. So uh, in just thinking about uh, this topic of having a practice is thinking of your practice as an asset. You want to say more about that? Yeah, so I really came to this realization. I was working with someone who was in his early 70s, I believe. And he believed that he was going to work, you know, forever. Like he was going to work until he was in the 80s or 90s. And I find that that's very, very common in, in the mm-hmm. therapy space because, you know, it makes sense. You, you're you used to caring about others. So uh, you know how to help others. So why not continue working as long as you can? Um, the problem is when you're like on my side of things, you don't know what's going to happen uh, for the many years, like prior to, you know, actually passing away or anything like that, you could be become disabled, health issues could rise up and whatnot. Meanwhile, this person really hadn't done a lot of things in his life to protect his business or his his personal finances. And so this left him at a very dangerous spot where, you know, if something like from a health standpoint were to happen, it could really put him at a disadvantage long term in retirement. And when I was looking at it, what I realized is if if he could sell his business for say two, like, let's just say $200,000, which was less than he was making about 140,000 a year. And so it's less than two times his annual salary. Let's just say that that was the possible. His potential for protection long-term went up by like 30 percentage points. So it goes from like when we're doing our software, it shows like, oh, this person has about a 50% chance of running out of money. And suddenly he's now 80% chance of running out of money. And so this got me thinking about other professions, like in the financial advisor space, when an advisor steps away, they often sell their book of business. When lawyers step away, uh, they often sell their business. When accountants step, step away, they often sell their business, but that doesn't happen a lot in the therapy space. And I know, you know, some of the practical reasons why, right? Because it's such a personal relationship with the clients and whatnot. But I don't believe that that should hold someone back from looking at their asset, something they've built their entire life, Mm -hmm. I might add, as zero if you're no longer there. And so in order to get past that sort of notion of, you know, these are my clients and they only work with me, you, you know, you have to take some steps to ensure that the business can live beyond you. But doing so can add so much protection, you know, long term when we're talking about, you know, whether you're financial, you you want to step away because you want to a luxurious retirement or you want to pursue something new or whatever your your goals are. Right, right. Yeah, I know that it's, it's interesting because this has been on my radar here lately. I've kind of shared, I'm nearing retirement age. I, I know it's a shock to people to think that I'm that old, but but yeah, and so really thinking about, okay, what is, what is the value of your practice? And mm-hmm. if you were to if you were to just close close shop, that would not be what well, number one, it wouldn't necessarily be great for your clients, but also you know over the years as you've worked to build a practice, work to build a clientele, you know, we do have those personal relationships with our clients. And so 
thinking about that. You, uh, you know, you reminded me, you know, we were talking about this in my mastermind group, my focus group, which is uh, for group practice owners. And that's this whole topic came up. Okay. Of if something were to happen to you tomorrow, what would happen with your practice? Right. And so being able to think about professional wills, and just thinking about, okay, you know, who's going to do what and how is that going to transfer and all of that sort of thing is mm-hmm. something we all need to be thinking about. Absolutely. You know, I've told this story uh, a few times in my writing and then also, you know, on other platforms, but like, and so if you've heard this, you know, that's, I'm sorry, but I'll share it anyways. Mm-hmm. My wife right before COVID was seeing a, a therapist and had seen her for many, many years. And it's tragically, she was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, like her finances were such a state that she had to work all the way up to the end. And she worked up to like a week or two before she passed away. And then after we know that her family had to like sell their house and move because of the financial blow. I mean, it's truly tragic for them. And on a much smaller scale, like my wife took years before finding another therapist. And I know therapists care about that type of stuff. And so I share Mm -hmm. that just as a worst case scenario situation, you don't want to put yourself in that scenario. The beauty about like looking at your practice on that long-term perspective is you can actually set up plans while you're in a position of strength, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways that I like talk to people, I encourage people to at least think about this. And I think that appeals to most like solo practitioners in particular is thinking about a partner. So when we're, when you look at just sort of the dynamics of the US, right? People are getting older and there's this huge group coming into the workforce. Um, And so there's this huge group that needs like mentorship, guidance, and things of that nature. Meanwhile, there's this huge group that needs um, uh, to pass, wants to pass down their knowledge, but also wants to ensure that their practices continue after they're gone. And so it creates a real good opportunity to find the right person that matches your personality that you believe can treat your patients with the same type of care. And, you know, it's not going to be one-to-one, but it's going to be similar to how you do so. And in doing so, you can actually set up what's called like buy-sell agreements. And, you know, I'm not a lawyer, I'm a a financial advisor. So I I Mm -hmm. advise on sort of the impacts of these things, but nonetheless, these buy-sell agreements, you can actually negotiate with this, this partner that you're bringing onto the practice, you're getting people used to seeing their faces and whatnot. So when you are ready to retire, you have this buy-sell agreement in place that they're going to take over your portion of ownership of the practice in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And now it's not, you know, I'm no longer able to work. And so I have to scramble to hope to find someone who can take care of it. Instead, you already plan that out and you already know that your patients are in good hands as mm-hmm. you step away. Right, right. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I think we think about retirement, but also, you know, you know, a contingency plan should something happen where you're like, like the example you gave of the therapist that all of a sudden she's diagnosed with a terminal illness and, you know, what wasn't really prepared for that. And, you know, people hear from me all the time, you know, the time to start planning for retirement was yesterday. And so, yeah. And so being able to to think ahead in that way. And I think one of the difficulties, uh, I think for a lot of us that are in this therapy world is we kind of shy away from looking at our numbers, but I think it's one of the most important things that we can do, do. Oh, absolutely. I, I, you know, I'd add on the, you know, the saving for retirement that yesterday type of mm-hmm. thing, like that's for anyone, no matter what stage in their practice growth is. I always say that saving for retirement and I put a retirement in air quotes, which you can't see on a podcast, but mm-hmm. is whether you, you want to work forever or mm-hmm. you want to work till you're 50, whatever it is. Saving for retirement is like the best thing you can do. It's the, it creates basically a secondary income stream that, yeah, you're not going to tap for a long time. But let me tell you, when there is nothing better than when things are a little slow and you look at your your overall net worth and it is still looking very strong because you've done the things to set aside for long-term savings, 
it can give you not only comfort when things get slow, mm-hmm. but it can give you comfort to invest in your business as you're growing and whatnot. Because, mm-hmm. hey, you know, worst case scenario, you have protection for yourself in the long term. Mm-hmm. And so I look at it as almost like a beautiful income stream that really kind of turns your uh, financial picture from just hey, you and your business to mm-hmm. also you and your business and this. And then now maybe you have a house. And so you have all these different things that are working for your complete financial picture. Right, right. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a matter of diversifying things, which for folks that yeah. learn in your field, just learning about investing and that sort of thing. It's so important to have a lot of don't put all your eggs in one basket, as they say, and have yeah. a lot of different ways to to gain income in the long term. Yeah, it, you know, it's it's hard. It, it really depends on where you are in the in that journey of yours, right? Because you know, I'll talk to people who just started their private practice. Well, you can't expect you can't expect like when you start a private practice, so much of your focus could be on that practice, and so much of your financial future is going to be based on that practice, mm-hmm. and there's not much you can do about that because you're you're still building your income. And then once you've built a sort of layer, then you can start, you know, diversifying, as you say, into these other avenues. The good news is even as you're building that practice, you can actually strengthen the practice or the financial viability of the practice by like doing things like investing in retirement because you're creating tax savings. So you're keeping more money uh, in hand um, and things of that nature. So uh, it is a way to kind of ensure you're keeping more of that so-called revenue, uh, you know, as things are getting started as well. Right, right. So Ryan, what um, what would you say are some tips you would give people to be able to kind of think about this in this this way? You know, I know we were chatting a little bit before we started recording just about cash flow because I was thinking about, you know, your your practice as an asset. And something I have to remind myself is is that, and I think a lot of us in the field do this, is that particularly like if you've got a group practice, you do payroll. And when you do payroll, your your bank account takes a big hit because that's usually the most expensive part of running a practice is what you pay your people. But being able to recognize that that cash is going to continue to come in. And that's because we've built a good network of referral sources and all of that sort of thing. So anyway, I don't, I I got off track there, but as you think about getting people to think about, okay, how do I think about my practice as an asset and what do I need to do to start this process of really preparing for retirement, preparing for succession, all of those kinds of things. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about the cash flow aspect if that works. Like I, you know, when I was reaching out to you, I had just listened to the Profit First podcast that you had done. Yeah, um, uh-huh. and that's like a really good. You know, it's a, I, I've heard that concept before. It's uh, a really good behavioral kind of finance tactic to take to make sure that you are bringing in money to yourself and you know, fully encourage that. I would I would say you also put your retirement savings in that mix. Having the retirement mm-hmm. set aside saying, okay, well, this thousand dollars this month is going to that. And we know that it's, I mean, you know, it's a key to making sure that that doesn't get lost in all the shuffle that we have to build, have to, have mm-hmm. to deal with. And so then managing expenses after that fact uh, is really important. The other thing about cash flow is one, make sure that you not only have a an emergency fund for your personal finances, make sure you have an emergency fund for your business. Um, mm-hmm. And you know it gets a little bit more complicated with a group practices as they get very large because then yeah, the payroll can be very large. But the concept's the same. Like having three to six months of expenses in a business account is going to be really important, along with having three to six months in your savings account because you don't want the need for a new roof to impact what you're doing on the business side. And you don't want mm-hmm. the you know investment in 
let's just say a new website or something like that impact what you're bringing home that month for, you know, to cover your life expenses and whatnot. And then as, in order to build that like three to six months, what you need to do is take a look at the personal finance side, uh, figure out what your expenses are. These are the non-negotiable expenses. You know, this is the food. This is if you have own a house mortgage or rent and, and other expenses that you just can't get rid of, you don't want to get rid of, that's that's what you need to cover. Whatever you make here in your business, that's your salary. The salary that you give yourself is what covers all those expenses. You have a good month, you give yourself that same salary. Because when mm -hmm. you have a good month, what you're doing is you're funneling it back into your business, creating that safety net. Only after you've created that safety net and you feel like you're you're in a good place, then you can kind of start giving yourself raises on good months, but you, mm -hmm. you really delay doing that for a good amount of time just just because you you want that business to succeed. That's going to be that's your that's your bread and butter. you know that's what you're going to build a mm -hmm. lifetime building and you don't want to sap it too early just so you know you can get a little nicer car or whatever is sort of on your mind. Right, right. I couldn't agree more and that's something that folks hear from me uh, that there, there's a course that I did with a friend, Julie Harris, who yeah, that's probably the, I, I know that's the episode you're referring to yeah, is just, is. yeah. So Julie, Julie is a good friend. And one of the things that we both talk about is exactly what you said is having a buffer of at least three to six months of all your salary, all your expenses and everything is set aside so that when you hit those slow periods in your practice, which we all do, you know, we're kind of here in the summer months, usually things kind of slow down a little bit because people are on vacations and that sort of thing. And then being able to, to cover everything, you don't have all of that anxiety about, okay, how am I going to make payroll or how am I going to yeah. pay my building lease or you know, the the electric bill and, and all of that sort of thing, because don't know about where you are, Ryan, but it's been pretty hot. So my my electric <laughs> bill has gone up quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And so being re being prepared for those kinds of things and being able to to have that buffer just takes. And I think if you can. The other thing, too, is just be consistent with that. In other words, mm -hmm. make sure that you're doing that every month, setting that money aside that sort of thing is is real important. Yeah, and one thing I would add on on that is because one time something I see this is not unique to therapists. This is this is every every person who owns a business, like a small business of any kind, is they treat the business account like this free expense tool, and so they'll buy stuff and say, "Oh, I can just write that off taxes," mm. and then at the end of the year, they wonder why they're in debt. And they're not, even if they've had a good year, they're in debt, but they can't figure out why. And it's because they're spending so much on stuff through the business, lunches, technology, whatever. Like you should always invest in the things that's going to build your business that way, mm -hmm. but you cannot treat it like your own personal spending account because the way I, I put it is, yes, you can write that off on taxes. But that's like getting going to the store and getting 25% discount off mm -hmm. of what you purchase. It's not a one-to-one. -one. The you know, IRS is not saying, okay, well, you spent it, you get 100% off of your taxes. They're saying, okay, you get the 25% off that you've essentially put towards your taxes. So being careful about that is really, really important. Right, right. Yeah. Boy, this is good stuff. I th I think it's a lot for folks to think about. I know we've got to be. I've got to be respectful of your time, Ryan. But tell folks how they can get in touch with you if they want to find out more about what you do and what you offer, or just say more about that. Sure. So yeah, I think maybe if just a real quick, I'll, I'll give a little explanation of like mm -hmm. the difference between fee only and other types of financial advisors that you see, and mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll explain where you. Can, find me. So, you know, one thing I learned while I was like looking at the financial advising space is just how many different types of business models there were. You know, you probably experienced that a little bit in therapy between those mm -hmm. who work with the healthcare groups and those who are on their own and whatnot. But in the financial space, it's gotten a bad rap because there's so many people that charge kind of underhandedly. They say that they're a life, life insurance firm that says, hey, come, I'm going to give you a financial plan for free when in fact they're putting you in, in really bad life insurance 
or you know a mutual fund group saying, hey, we're going to give you a financial plan, but they're actually giving you a really bad mutual fund that's paying them commissions to do so. So what fee only means is they don't, we don't do that. You're our client, then that's it. You're the one paying us and we're not giving you insurance advice based on how much money I'm going to make from the insurance company. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that's a big aspect of fee only. And so if people are curious about like financial planning and whatnot, make sure to look out for that. There's two different things, fee only, and there's one that's fee based. Fee based Mm -hmm. is going to be that commission. Fee only is no commission. So so look out for that term. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I decided to go to financial advising, I'm fee only. Uh, I work out of Long Island, uh, New York, and I can work with people all across the nation um, and do so. Um, and you can find me at thinkingcapfinancial.com. I've actually put a checklist on there that you can download at thinkingcapfinancial.com slash checklist. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll have links here in the show notes and the show summary for people to access that easily. Well, Ryan, are there any parting thoughts or wisdom you want to give us before we close out? No, I think I think we covered it, but I do appreciate the time, Gordon. I love your podcast. It's always good information. So I, I, I'm the fact that I'm on here is, is an honor. Well, thanks. Thanks. You're very kind. So and uh, hopefully we'll be able to have this conversation again. Anytime. Well, folks, I hope you found this episode helpful. Um, you know, I think it's the, the financial side of running a private practice, but also our our own lives is just something that we really need to pay attention to. I know, you know, when we're in our younger years, and I, I don't want to sound like the old fart here in, in saying this, you know, financial planning and thinking about retirement just seems so far away. Uh, but one of the things I'll say is that I'm really glad that uh, my wife and I had thought about this early on. And um, I'm glad that we got the advice from good financial advisors and that sort of thing. But be sure to check out Ryan's things by checking the show notes here. Um, And I think he's got some good stuff that he can help you get started and get you in the moving in the right track and thinking about retirement and what is coming down the road for all of us. Um, You know, one of the things about going into private practice um, for most all of us that are in private practice is because it really gives us a lot of freedom to set our own schedule and do all those things and create uh, that something that is uh, aligns with the kind of life we want to le- lead. And so, yeah, and part of that is just thinking da- into the future. So hopefully you found this all helpful. And before we close out here, I'd love for you to check out the Practice Launch Club, particularly if you're in those beginning stages of running a private practice. The Practice Launch Club is a membership community um, that I lead uh, where we meet two times a month to just brainstorm and do a little mastermind group together. Also, there are tutorials and lessons that are available to the people in the Practice Launch Club, along with other resources like paperwork packets and templates and that sort of thing that you can use in your practice in those beginning stages. And then also we've got on the Circle platform uh, an online community uh that that's there part of the practice launch club to communicate and share ideas and ask questions in between the times that we meet. But uh, you've got just a few days left to take advantage of the, of the membership discount that I'm offering uh, for, for the month of September. And if you can use the coupon code, just simply PLC fall 2023 and go to the website practiceoftherapy.com slash launch club to find out more about that. And also, I'm, I'm willing to jump on a phone call, quick phone call with you if you have questions, just to see if it's a good fit for you. It's not necessarily the best fit for everyone, so you need to know that before you commit. So anyway, happy to do that. And also, real quickly before we go, big thanks to our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. And they are who I use in my practice and absolutely one of the best platforms out there for mental health providers. They're who I use in my practice, as I've said already. And um, 
couldn't do without them. So be sure and check them out, practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes, and use that pro- promo code just Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, uh, to get try them out for two months for free. So that's it, folks. Got a lot of great guests lined up here in the future. And we're just two episodes away from uh, our 300th episode, which is just crazy to think that I've been doing this that long. And we've got a special episode coming up with uh, a special guest for that episode number 300. So stay tuned. Got more to come. Take care, folks. You've been listening to the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. You can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting psychcraftnetwork.com. And if you haven't done so already, please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide, along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal, accounting, or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.